Welcome once more to the hallowed halls of our grand library. Today our tale takes us into the depths of history, where we shall uncover the secrets of the blood-soaked Hillsborough foothills. Join me, Hogarth York Slayer, alongside my esteemed partner, Galadriel Truthseeker, as we weave the tale of this once ferocious battlefield. The Hillsborough foothills constitute a vast expanse within the once mighty kingdom of Lordaeron. Here, the lingering influence of the Scourge has left but a very faint mark, allowing the land's natural beauty to persist. The southwestern reaches, including places like the Azure Lode Mine, once formed a portion of Gilneas before the erection of the formidable Greymain Wall. Meanwhile, the heartland of central Hillsborough has held its place within the Old Kingdom of Lordaeron since at least 19 years before the events of the Dark Portal. However, this picturesque realm stands fractured and rent asunder by ceaseless conflict. From the echoes of the Second War to the Forsaken's relentless pursuit for domination over all of Lordaeron, these deceptively serene foothills hold a multitude of historical stories waiting to be recounted. Following their defeat in the First War, the denizens of Stormwind embarked on a magnificent exodus across the vast Great Sea, ultimately finding solace on the shores of Lordaeron. These displaced refugees established their new home in the vicinity of South Shore, swearing their allegiance to the Alliance and deploying their forces throughout the entire region in anticipation for the impending Horde invasion. Furthermore, in readiness, Alliance Supreme Commander Anduin Lothar strategically positioned his army within the Hillsborough foothills near South Shore. He believed that this location would enable swift deployment of his army to any corner of continental Lordaeron. This choice was of paramount importance since neither Lothar nor the Alliance leadership possessed any precise knowledge of the Horde's impending invasion plans. Amidst their vigil in the foothills, Lothar devised tactics alongside the Alliance monarchs and his four trusted lieutenants. His second in command, Chura Leon, as well as Uthar, Khadgar and Grand Admiral Dalin Proudmoor. Two days prior to the impending battle, the Human Kingdoms' armies received reinforcement from an elven battle group led by Alaria Windrunner. This expedition was dispatched by the Kingdom of Quel'Thalas in honour of the debt owed to Lothar, the last of the Arathi bloodline. Ogrim Doomhammer, the war chief of the Orcish Horde, had recently orchestrated a lightning swift invasion of Kazmodan. Utilising resources appropriated from the Dwarven territories, he initiated the construction of a formidable transport fleet. These colossal rowing vessels bore thousands of orcs across the Grey Sea, delivering them to the southernmost reaches of Lordaeron. Alaria's vigilant rangers and Proudmoor's keen scout ships both reported these movements, prompting Lothar to hastily mobilise his forces westward, with the aim of intercepting the Horde as they made landfall. Proudmoor's formidable navy sent several of the orc transports to the depths, claiming the lives of thousands of orcs who were aboard them. This devastating blow decimated the Horde's initial fighting force, consisting of tens of thousands of orcs. Despite these staggering losses, the sheer number of orc transports allowed them to reach Lordaeron's coast with a force that still outnumbered the Alliance. To confront this relentless tide, Lothar strategically positioned the Alliance army along the final ridge of Hillsborough's undulating foothills, their gaze fixed upon South Shore and the vast Great Sea. The defenders of the Alliance advanced towards the shoreline as the Horde disembarked, aiming to engage the orcs as they set foot on the land. The Alliance forces erupted into cheers as the trio of leaders laid low several orcs, crushing their adversaries with skill and valour. However, as thousands more Horde warriors continued to land, the three leaders wisely retreated to the forefront of the Alliance formation to advert being overwhelmed. It was at this critical point that Turilion's life was saved by Alaria Windrunner. Returning safely to the formation, Lothar issued orders for the soldiers to lock shields and raise their spears creating a bulwark against the oncoming orc onslaught. The Horde crashed against these defensive lines three times, each assault extracting a heavy toll from their ranks. Following the third failed assault, the Horde brought forth a cadre of towering ogres armed with uprooted trees. These colossal brutes crushed entire sections of the Alliance's shield wall. Chura Leon and other Alliance leaders made the call to fall back and regroup the Alliance managed to establish another shield wall at the foothills' base. In light of this retreat, Khadgar harnessed the power of a tempest, unleashing three lightning bolts from his fingertips that engulfed different clusters of orcs, reducing them to ash. 
Seizing this diversion, Trillion reinforced the new shield wall and ordered the setting of brush fires in the Orc's path to the west. This strategic move aimed to hinder the Horde from flanking the Alliance and encircling them. Khadgar, in a final display of power, struck down the lead ogre with a thunderous lightning bolt. Nonetheless, the Horde continued their attack, and it seemed that the Horde was gathering for another series of assaults. With the Alliance shield wall teetering on the brink of breaking under another onslaught, Lothar issued a daring cavalry charge into the heart of the Horde's front lines. Lothar, Turileon, and other mounted warriors thundered into the enemy ranks, carving a path through the Orc forces on two separate occasions. However, before a third charge could be launched, the Horde sounded the drums of retreat. In the aftermath of the conflict, the Horde regathered its forces and executed a strategic withdrawal to the east, directing their path toward the hinterlands. Here they devised a dual-pronged approach. One group would assail the hinterlands to divert the pursuing alliance, while the other would initiate the primary invasion into Quel'Thalas. Amid this retreat, the formidable alliance stronghold known as Dernholder Keep fell victim to a daring raid orchestrated by none other than Orgrim Doomhammer himself. His objective, to liberate the forest troll warlord Zul'jin. In the wake of the Second War, Dernhold assumed the role of the central command centre for the Orc internment camps. Initially, the keep was under the rule of the self-indulgent Lieutenant General Adelis Blackmore. Following the discovery of a slain Orc chieftain's son, Adelis Blackmore took custody of the young Orc infant and brought him to Dernhold Keep. Within the fortress's walls, the Orc underwent a rigorous regimen of training and education, including the care from a human nurse. As he matured, he formed a close bond with the nurse's daughter, Teretha Foxton. Under Blackmore's oppressive rule, the Orc was renamed to Thrall, and subjected to brutal beatings and torment within the fighting arena, all to elevate Blackmore's own status and influence. Teretha, however, defied the odds and maintained a relationship with Thrall during his incarceration. Over time, their exchanges grew increasingly fervent, culminating in Thrall's resolve to break free. In a daring act of diversion, Teretha facilitated Thrall's escape from his cell, leading to a rendezvous outside of the fortress. Here, she supplied him with vital provisions and equipment, setting him on a path away from Dernhold, a place he hoped to never revisit. Yet, Thrall emerged as a beacon of hope for the orcs of Dernhold Keep, embarking on a resolute mission to dismantle the internment camp system. He eventually liberated the smaller encampments, and in a climatic confrontation, besieged Dernold itself. In a duel of life and death, Thrall faced off against Blackmore and emerged victorious. In the aftermath, he laid waste to the keep, invoking the power of the spirit and earth to level the fortress to the ground. To this day, it ruins bear witness to the tumultuous history that unfolded within its walls, and until recently, they served as an outpost for the Syndicate, a faction that had staked a claim to numerous ruins across Hillsborough, Arathi, and the Alteric Mountains. The Alliance foothills experienced a state of dormancy, lying dormant and tranquil until the advent of the Third War. As the Third War dawned, Thrall issued the command to rally the Orcish clans, preparing the fledgling horde for a momentous departure from the continent to journey to Kalimdor. In the midst of their preparations, they engaged in skirmishes with Alliance units and succeeded in liberating Gromish Hellscream and his Warsong clan from captivity. Subsequently, under the cover of night, they covertly infiltrated Southshore, where they commandeered ships with the intent of embarking on their voyage to Kalimdor. Throughout the harrowing Third War, the Alterac Mountains enveloping the Hillsbrad foothills bore witness to catastrophic events, notably the ruinous demise of the splendid violet city Dalaran, at the hands of Archimond the Defiler. The saga of those snow-cloaked peaks and the illustrious mage city shall await its telling on another occasion, as our narrative compels us to advance beyond the events of the Third War. Two years after the conclusion of the Third War, Caligos, who had ascended to the role of the aspect of the Blue Dragonflight following the demise of Malagos, ventured into the region in search of Avina Taig. Her name was veiled in the deepest enigma, and little did anyone know that she was not, in fact, a human being. 
Instead, she embodied the residual energies of the sun well, transformed into the semblance of a human avatar through the artistry of the red dragon, Coriolstrus. Upon learning of the Aspex's presence, Darkhan Drathria, once an esteemed magister, deceived to the formidable dragon slayer, Harkin Grimstone, into pursuing Caligos. After a brief skirmish that resulted in the injury of Caligos, Harkin and his companions journeyed to Torren Mill, only to discover Caligos once more. Simultaneously, the Scourge launched an invasion on the town. It was during this moment that Harkin came to realise he had been naught but a pawn in Darkhan's scheme to hunt down Caligos. Fueled by this revelation, he turned against Darkhan, joining forces with the others to defend Torrid Mill. Curiously, before the scourging of Lordaeron, the settlements of Taran Mill and Southshore enjoyed a reputation for their strong camaraderie. In a symbolic gesture of their friendship, a tower was raised at the crossroads that lay equidistant between the two towns. The very notion of rivalry between these communities was deemed inconceivable. Following the horrifying events at the Wrathgate in Northrend, perpetrated by the Forsaken during the war against the Lich King, Archlord Varimathras dispatched his agents to covertly observe the human population of Hillsbrad for a considerable duration. When the opportune moment arrived, Varimathras orchestrated a campaign through his High Executor, Darthalia, against the humans of Hillsbrad. Their objective was twofold to subdue humanity and provide ample time for their apothecaries to craft a new plague. Darthalia initiated her offensive by focusing on the northernmost farms of Hillsbrad Fields, targeting not only the farmers but also farmhands and landowners. Following these initial attacks, the Forsaken ruthlessly targeted Hillsbrad's peasants, throwing the human populace into turmoil. In response, the Hillsbrad townsfolk organised themselves into a militia, to further weaken Hillsbrad's resistance, Darthalia had Horde operatives eliminate the local blacksmiths, hampering the production of weapons. Additionally, she placed bounties on prominent Hillsbrad individuals who had proven themselves formidable adversaries of the Forsaken. Subsequently, the Horde escalated their actions, assaulting Hillsbrad's leadership and undermining their mining operations within Azure Load Mine. With Hillsbrad severely crippled, the Horde turned their attention to purging Dungarok of its dwarven forces. The battle for Hillsbrad eventually evolved into a full-fledged conflict, drawing the attention of adventurers from both the Alliance, primarily Southshore, and the Horde, predominantly Taran Mill. These adventurers frequently clashed in intense skirmishes during the course of this notorious conflict. Numerous esteemed adventurers from across Azeroth ventured onto the battlefield during the Alliance and Horde clash in the Hillsbrad foothills. Among them, many ascended to the prestigious ranks of Grand Marshal within the Alliance and High Warlord within the Horde. It's a lesser-known fact that during the battle for Hillsbrad and the Alterac Valley invasions, it was on these very fields that the Keeper of the Karazhan Library, Hogarth, earned both the titles of Orkslayer and Knight of the Alliance. By the time of the Cataclysm, the Forsaken had achieved a resounding victory over the Alliance in Southshore and Hillsbrid by employing the devastating new plague that left towns utterly uninhabitable. With their dominion now extended, the expansive Forsaken harboured ambitions of securing their existing territories as a stepping stone toward the conquest of the remainder of Lordaeron. During this period, the mages of Dalaran engaged in relentless conflict against the Forsaken while they diligently reconstructed their city. Ultimately, Dalaran relocated to Northrend to confront the Lich King, leaving only a minimal alliance presence in the region, primarily concentrated around the Dalaran Crater. In the present day, the Hillsbrid foothills continue to suffer under the shadow of the Forsaken, existing in a state of desolation and decay when compared to its illustrious former splendour. The Hillsbrid Foothills' history unfolds through the tumultuous eras of the Second and Third War, the dark chapter of Durnhold Keep, and the relentless Forsaken invasion. During the Third War, Southshore and Torah Mill, once allies became battlegrounds for alliance and horde clashes. In conclusion, the Hillsbrid Foothills' story serves as a testament to the enduring toll of conflict and war, with a once tranquil land forever changed by the passage of history.